I got a new cut. What do y'all think about the new cut? Pretty tight? Yes, no, no, yes. Comment below. So I ordered a Canon 50mm 1.4 in the mail and I got it in the mail and the focus ring was broken. So I had to send it back and I decided not to even go with Canon. It really just upset me all around because first of all, I was debating on going with Sigma Art anyway because I love Sigma Art way over Canon. I don't know why I did that. I think I did it because it was cheaper. But when I sent it back with the broken ring, I just went ahead and ordered the Sigma Art 50mm and it's coming in today. So I'm pretty stoked about that that leaves me with the sigma art 18 to 35 sigma art 24 sigma art 50 and the canon 100 millimeter micro hi. hi hopefully this 50 comes in pretty quick man i'm excited to use it Just getting back to my apartment from going to the gym. I worked out for a little bit. Oh man, the light is amazing over here. I'm having these bad pains on the left side of my abdomen. I don't know what's going on. I need to get it fixed. It might be because I was working out too hard or it might be something. I just went and ran. It felt like I had 27 cramps in this lower abdomen area and it was killing me. I almost felt like going to the ER. I don't know. But anyway, I got my 50 millimeter Sigma Art lens in the mail today. It is plush. It is ice, ice mode. It is gorgeous, I love it. I actually sent my Sigma Art 24 to 105 millimeter back on a re return and today was the last day that I could return it and I sent it back on Amazon to get my refund for that. So now I only have four lenses like I was telling you guys earlier. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> 24 millimeter 1.4, 50 millimeter 1.4, 18 to 35 1.8, and my Canon 100 millimeter macro 2.8. I have like a ton of footage that I need to like put together into a vlog or some of some sort. Footage from a music video that I DP'd with Joe Moore for the other day with a dude named Money Man. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Money Man. He's a big Atlanta artist. I also have just a bunch of other random stuff. Opening up mail for my new backpack that I got, all this stuff. I don't even know how I piece this together. I'm about to put it together right here though. Yo, what up, y'all? Just got some packages in. Welcome to the vlog, man. I got Cotton and Joe in here. They're chilling, but I'm about to go in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a neck strap. Simple strap for my camera and my Canon when I'm on the go because it is hard trying to figure out where to set it down all the time. So I like to have a neck strap on it. So I got this cool thing. Boom. This is cool. Fair trash. <laughs> Oh, more wire bags. These cool bags are listed in my kit. Go find them. It's three. It's a big one, a medium, and another small one. They're dope. I got orange this time. They look sick. Cool. Oh, and I got the in-case backpack. Hopefully this fits everything. This is actually... If you follow Watch Damaging, this is the same bag that he has. If you follow Taylor Cut Films, this is the same bag he has. If you follow Matt Como, this is the same bag he has. A lot of dope is influencers use this bag. And I've actually seen it in person and it looks pretty dope. So this might be the best bag I've seen up to date. So I ordered it, it's cool, it looks fresh so far. I'm trying to load everything up in here and I'm gonna do what's in my camera bag video for you guys. So that's it. Alright, what's up guys? So Joe Moore actually hired me to come on set with him for behind the scenes, which is the clips that you see right here. And he also brought me on to do some DP work. And as you can see, uh, everybody's in the studio setting up. This video was shot in Atlanta, Georgia, or an indie artist and uh, money man. And we were at studio space, which we always go to. Uh, as you can see right here, we were putting some fog in the air. Uh, we had an overlight. Uh, overhead light, I'm sorry, and a light down below where Roger's setting up right now that would be facing onto uh, the talent on set. Um, as you can see, the fog and the overhead light right there coming down. Um, so we were going to do a tripod shot, but we decided to do handheld, and that was just basically my call on, uh, you know, being the DP for this specific shot. And the reason for it is because the... Uh, the tripod was kind of not uh, fully firm. I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get those good motions like with my hand. I typically do some crazy style shots like that. And that's part of the reason why Joe brought me on set for my uh, handheld shot. As you can see, Joe was messing with the tripod right here. It wasn't really uh, up to par. So, you know, we took it off and I got to shooting. We got the talent on set and in place. And as you can see, some of the jerks and handheld movements I do right there. Um, 
it gives for a good high energy uh, feeling in the music video. And right there is a prism we were putting into the lens with a low aperture, so it would be like crazy effects going on in camera without even having to edit the video yet. And to the right, you can see like a light swinging. And there it is in the back is the Ari swinging back and forth, which is going in and out of the lens. And it looked crazy with the model dancing. So shortly after Joe brung in the Porsche, he rented this Porsche and he rented it on Turo. Uh, Turo is an app where you can actually rent out sick cars for music videos. Um, it's much easier than going through like Enterprise or something like that. So him and Roger were actually setting up uh, the car and trying to get the lighting perfect for this scene. It looks pretty dope right there with some of the fog in the air. And they adjusted the overhead light to where the talent would be sitting at. And this scene actually turned out pretty dope. Right here, Joe is actually uh, dumping footage from the red. If you shoot with a red, you're gonna have to dump your memory cards a lot and you'll have to bring your laptop on set, which is kind of inconvenient, but it is what it is when you're shooting with a red. But yeah, so we were trying to set up all the, um, things for this uh next uh, uh next uh, shoot or uh, scene i'm sorry and here joe was actually messing around with the flag and he actually ended up not even liking it oh right here is the led light and i told them to put that red uh gel around it and throw it in the car so it would have like a cool look inside of the car and there's kind of like a shot where you can see what's going on uh, we're fogging it up put the red gel over the light in the background so it would be on the car it turned out real like dark and seductive looking it was pretty dope as you can see the flag in the back they ended up putting it on um light stands and kind of like taping it or i'm not sure but they ended up doing that in the background so it looked pretty good so roger uh alpha male visuals he's actually going in and out um with the easy rig and the Ronin and Joe's just kind of like making sure that he doesn't fall or anything. And he's also direct and telling him what shots to get and how to go in and out. And you can see they're pretty piped up right here. It looked pretty cool. And then next was these two models getting some B roll just for the last shots after they did the performances, man, it really turned out good at the studio. So we ended up wrapping up at the studio and we headed over to the trap house, which was the next and last scene. And as you can see, they were setting up some lights and stuff like that um, in a tight, tight, small little space in this kitchen. And here we got Money Man. He actually came to set. This was his scene, his solo. Well, not even his solo. It was a uh, the kitchen scene. He had a solo and he had the shot with his friends. And as you can see, Roger's coming in and out of the doorway into the kitchen, uh, getting performance shots of him shooting at 24 frames per second. I'm pretty sure that's what they were shooting at. And it, it looked good, man. They had the light overhead light and they had the other lights coming through the window in the back and through the doorway. And here is another part where I was DPing at the for Money Man. Um, we had the prism messing around right there. So basically, we had him and the light coming through the door, had it hazed up a little bit, and you know I was kind of getting that shoulder rig action in, some good jerks and high energy shots, and they ended up being super, super dope. So Joe, he had to um, set up the next scene, which was both artists, Money Man, and the. Uh, indie artist whoa I believe that's his name and he also had the model in this shot and uh, so here you can see alpha male was setting up the camera and everything for his DP he was gonna shoot the scene and I actually pick up or a shot after he does his shot so money man came in Joe was doing great man uh, you know it was hard to direct in such a small little area and so many people but uh, things turned out really great so they threw on a wide angle lens and they were uh, they uh, got that real, real low for the shot and it looked pretty freaking cool. They had the lights coming through the window and some haze and as you can see, he's kind of getting like the, the, the model's ass in like the foreground of the shot. So that was pretty cool. It turned out to be pretty unique looking. Um, here we got, uh, I went back in on the DP and to get some stuff and you can see I'm just kind of like wild all over, down low, up high and uh, we switched up the position of the artist. We put one on each side of the model and had the model in the middle and you know, I was just going back and forth but these shots were great. As you can see, Joe's doing some uh, 
hands-on work right there, not just directing. So he's super versatile on set, man. And, and you know, we had a great time filming all this stuff. And uh, that is the red. And then the last shot uh, of the night or day, night, whatever, uh, was this model. And we had her back in the same spot that we got the solo for Money Man. And she did great. She looked great. And to sum up the video shoot, this was an amazing shot for B-roll. Why would that do that on There's no possible way. It's gotta be that. The card's fast. <laughs> Yo, we're about to head out. The reason that we were laughing all hard was because my stupid memory card kept going out. I don't know what it was doing, but it was acting funny. Nah. Oh, yeah, they think we're the feds now. Club parking. <laughs> this footage yeah we getting edits knocked out up in here oh yeah Daniel Vorle is getting edits knocked out we're not really though <laughs> we got gear everywhere some stuff in there oh C100 more 5Ds got with Joe and now we're going where are we going we're going to try kill me crazy oh! whoa, 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 whoa. oh snap yo your boy <laughs> and it paid immediately. Yeah, it paid immediately and it paid. Don't pay, that's consistent. You'll always be able Me and Joe are back. We tasted those acai bowls. They were pretty good, but the thing about them, they weren't as good as the place we go in Midtown at Vitality Bowl. Is that what it's called? But I'm back and I'm actually looking at this aperture light that I got, the 120D that uh, Aperture sent me. This light is absolutely amazing. It comes with one power cord that goes here, and this power cord connects to your controller, I guess. This is like a controller. You can control how bright it is and what channel it's going to. And then you have a cord that goes from that all the way to the light here. And now you have the different um, mounts. This is for like a spotlight, and I got it boosted all the way up to the bright, brightest. And we bounce it off the top ceiling. It's giving like an amazing light. This thing is amazing, and it doesn't get hot. It also comes with a freaking remote control, so you can dim down uh, the light whenever you need to. Say if you're out, like you got it set up and you don't want to run back over to it. Also on the back here of your remote, you have the V lock, so you can put a battery on it and use it anywhere. This is probably my favorite light that I own now and actually my favorite light that I've ever owned ever. Hey, how do hip hop did put me in the list of top photographers and chaos, that's hard. So I bounced it off the roof and now look at this cool light, it looks really good. It comes with this cool bag, really nice bag, really sturdy. Man, shout out to those guys, man. If you don't have a light at all and you're looking for the best light to go get, go get this light. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. This light is amazing. This is my favorite light. I'm gonna be using this light all the time. I still have my two LED panels that I have listed in my kit and I will continue to use those, but this one is just so convenient. It has the remote and everything. It's like super convenient and I can use it as a spotlight like in music videos. So typically now what I'm probably gonna do is use this light to be a spotlight in like the background shooting into the camera and I'll use my LED panels to light my subject overhead uh, similar to what you would do like if you used a Kino or something like that. So we're gonna be getting some pretty awesome videos with this new light. I'm pretty excited about this. I look forward to showing you guys some stuff with this light. Alright, so before I end this vlog out, I wanted to quickly tell you, matter of fact, real quick, you see right here, my desk right here, 
earlier when I was doing videos, my desk was over here. I had it over here because I was testing out like change. I was trying to see if I liked it better, like with next to the door, but it was kind of whack and I, it just was messing me up. Everything was throwing me off, so I moved my desk back over here. It just looks good over here. Desk back here, the um, picture here, the couch there. I don't know, it, it flows. Sorry, I had to turn the music down real quick. So I wanted to talk to you guys real quick. I know that it's probably mind boggling when someone that you trust in their word is like switching off cameras and lenses and different things all the time. In a way it's weird but in a way it's necessary because you have to test things before you can actually own them and love them so the things that I got rid of aren't necessarily bad they just weren't for me. So now I'm at a point where I'm set up and I got everything that I want and I'm, I actually deleted the Amazon app off of my phone. I'm not buying any more things for a while. I'm just gonna be rocking out with the lens setups that I have. Hey, what are you doing back there? And I'm also gonna be rocking out with the two cameras that I have, which is the GH5 and this Canon 6D Mark II. I love it. I love both my cameras. I love all four of my lenses. I love my new camera bag. I'm finally gonna do this what's in my camera bag video in my Pelican case, just so I can show you guys everything that I have and you can see the items in my bag and Pelican case are and what I use them for. Yo, but real quick, uh, just, a, just some word of advice, some motivation, man. Just kill it, man. Doesn't matter what piece of equipment you own. It doesn't matter if you have a T2i, it doesn't matter if you have a red dragon. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, there was a point in time when I was shooting a T2i with a 50 millimeter 1.8, the cheap $100 lens, nifty 50, and also the kit lens, 18 to 55. And I was out shooting people that were shooting with a 5D. And the reason for that is because I sat and I mastered my camera and I learned how to work it the best way possible with what I had. I wasn't like juggling different pieces of equipment and going through different pieces of equipment all the time and blah 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 blah, shipping it back, returning it, all this crazy stuff. I stuck with one setup and I made it happen with that one setup. So whatever you have right now, rock out with it man and use it to your ability, learn it, master it and kill it with it. Don't be, get up and go film right now, edit right now, just master that setup that you have and rock out with it. You're going to be great. You don't need a certain camera to be great. You don't need a certain light kit to be great. You don't need what your favorite Instagrammer has to be great. The best camera that you can have or the best stabilizer that you can have or best lens that you can have is the one that you have right now in your camera bag or in your trunk of your car or in your equipment room in your house. So go pick it up man. Start killing it. Do not worry about what you have. Don't worry about what your favorite YouTuber has, your favorite music video director has. Worry about what you got, man, and worry about killing it, man. And I deleted the Amazon app. No more buying stuff, so y'all have to see some dope stuff with what I got, man. Shout out to all my subscribers, man. I love all you guys. Make sure you like this, share this, and comment below and let me know how you like this. And if you're tired of Ace yelling every time I'm trying to talk in the vlog, there wouldn't be a Creative Ryan vlog without Ace. Peace! Peace.